Hi, I'm Woody Huffines. I own the Nerds to Go in McKinney and Frisco, Texas, and this is Tech for the Untechnical. How do the bad guys take over your bank account? The first way that the bad guys hack your bank account is using what are called banking trojans. A banking trojan is an application that is a trojan horse. Remember the story of the trojan horse? It's something that looks like one thing, it looks like a gift, looks like a good thing, it's really a bad thing. Well, there are banking trojans. And if you go onto the application store for your Android phone or your Apple phone, and you download a banking app, those banking apps can be Trojan horse apps, or apps that pretend to be something that they're not. So you go download um, a banking app to do the banking on your bank account for Bank of America or Frost Bank here in Texas, and the app is a false app. It's a fake app. It's an app that's really not the app that's put out by your bank. That's the first place. So when you go to log in to that fake app that looks just like the app that uh, is put out by your bank, it steals your password and it steals your username. So when it pops up something that says log into your bank, if it's a fake app or a Trojan app, you could be given the bad guys the information to get into your bank account and take all your money, take over your bank account because the app that you're using isn't a real bona fide app for that particular bank or financial institution. The second problem that you can have with Trojan apps are what's called app jacking, like hijacking, except it hijacks an app. And these are apps that are not banking apps per se, but these are applications that you install on your phone that monitor what your phone is doing and wait for you to start up a banking app. And then they key log or take the information that you enter when you use your real banking app to steal the information from your phone and move that information to the bad guys. So you can have a fake app or you can have an app that may be a weather app, maybe it's a dating app, maybe it's a game, but it stays resident in memory on your phone and waits for you to start up one of the number of one of the one of a number of banking applications and steals the data that you enter into that banking application, allowing the bad guys to take that data to get into your bank account. In effect, the app jacking is like a man in the middle of attack, but it's an app in the middle attack. It gets between you and your banking app, and it steals the information that you would be entering into your banking application by being an application in the middle of that transaction. You can solve some of that problem by calling the bank. If you run across an app that looks like an app for your bank, but it doesn't have millions or hundreds of millions of downloads, then it's probably a good idea to call your bank and make sure that you're downloading the right application so that you don't install a Trojan horse application on your phone. The second thing that's important is when you're downloading apps to only use the official app store for whatever operating system you use. Whether it's the Google Play Store or the Apple Store, make sure that you're getting those applications that you put on your phone from an official site. In the case of Android phones, they're set up so that you can't, by default, download applications from websites. You have to go to the Google Play Store. That's a that's a pretty good security feature and one that you probably don't want to disable. So only download applications from the, the primary Play Store or the primary source for the applications for your phone. Finally, pay attention to the permissions that the application asks for. When you install, especially off the Google Play Store, it'll tell you the permissions that that phone is asking to use. For example, if you're downloading a banking app and that banking app wants uh, access to your SMS feed or your SMS data or your SMS application, that's a problem. A lot of banking apps use two-factor authentication. In other words, when you sign in, they send you a text message, and that text message is then the message that you use to log into the banking app. The banking app should not have access to your SMS messages. For example, the other thing that you might look at is if it asks for permission to use your phone or permission to use your data. Pay attention to the application permissions that the application is asking for to avoid those Trojan banking apps. The first way you can lose control of your banking account 
is mobile banking Trojans, either an app that pretends to be the banking app that you want to use and it's not, or it's a Trojan app that's, say, a weather app that steals the information as you try to communicate to the bank. If you find this in information helpful, click on the subscribe button below, ring the notification bell, and when we put these out, you'll be able to get notified and come learn some more with us. I'm Woody Huffines. I own the Nerds to Go in McKinney and Frisco, Texas. This has been Tech for the Untechnical.